morning, everybody. It is Mother's Day today, so I just want to welcome all the moms and I uh, just want to share a little bit about how we think about Mother's Day here. Is we think about moms, it's not just moms who have had kids, but moms who have played roles in people's lives, in support, in emotional care, and we just want to welcome everybody here this morning, regardless of what kind of mom you are, we just celebrate you. So we're going to start off with a song called Rule, and as I always say, if you want to stand, this one's a little bit more of an upbeat one, so if you want to stand and sing along with us, you're welcome to do that.
prayer today. We thank you that every day is a new day. Every day is Resurrection Sunday with you, Lord. And we just want to know you more. That's our heart, Lord. We want to know who you are and who you created us to be. I pray that you would open our hearts to receive your truth today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, good morning. Happy Mother's Day. How's everyone doing? Happy Sunday. What a beautiful day. Isn't it great? Oh my gosh. What a gorgeous day out there. So after church, whatever mom wants to do, that's what you're doing. Okay? Whatever. <laughs> I just got back from a trip to Portland, Oregon, where I was hanging out with Pastor Joe Gruber. He was on our staff here for five years, and he left and planted a church during a pandemic. It's crazy. And it's so fun to talk to people in Scotts Valley. You know, yeah, we planted a church in Portland. Like, Portland, oh my gosh. It's so bad. And the news, it looks bad, right? But it's, you know it's really bad if, if Santa Cruz County is judging you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how bad it is up there. And it's so cool. What God is doing there, like where we were going to plant, uh, it, it didn't work out. And then like God orchestrated this whole thing and brought people together. And Joe's been building relationships with people. And, and we were given a church building a German Baptist church building. They know how to build buildings, let me tell you. The German Baptists, they build Mercedes Benz and they build they built this amazing brick church building that we were it's, it's a crazy story, but the long story short is you are a big part of that. Those of you who have given sacrificially and prayed for the church there, I can't tell you how amazing it is to see. I got I got to speak in front of the church in Portland and there's I mean, tons of people. We're talking like a lot of people. God's bringing people together, and they had a, a skateboard outreach with hot dogs. They had a couple hundred people, and then we had church on Sunday, and it was it was pretty like COVID. It was like almost like Joey, like you might need to go to two services, bro, you know. And um, I'm standing up there in front of the group, just looking at faces of people I'd never met, but I prayed for, and I felt like I was standing on holy ground, man. Just like to be there. I feel like I need to take my shoes off or something, you know? And I'm t they, he asked me to talk about audacious faith, which is hilarious because you're the guy that planted a church in Portland in a pandemic. That is audacious. That's crazy. And my message to them was that we need to have God-centered dreams and God-sized dreams. That we need to dream big and start small. And so then I'm there speaking that message, but I feel like, you know what's happening? I went there to encourage them. I went there to encourage Joe, but I walked away so much more encouraged. How many of you guys know in life that's the way it is, right? If you go into it trying to encourage somebody else, and I walked away thinking, you know what, Lord, forgive me for not dreaming big enough. Seeing that vision being fulfilled, honestly, it just fueled me. How many of you guys know vision fuels vision, right? When you see somebody that dreams, uh, even, even if it's not a, you know, a Christian, just to see, you know, whatever, but just seeing people that, that have big dreams, it inspires us to dream big. How much more the God, the creator of the universe, where it says in Ephesians that he can do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. Amen? Amen. Well, I actually have a message I want to share with you today. That's not it, but that's just like, I had to give you an update because many of you guys have given financially and supported and prayed for our church plan in Portland, and it's going really well. Every week we're seeing people come to know Jesus New people come to know Jesus every week, and it's growing. God's doing a new thing. It's so cool. Praise the Lord. Can we thank God for that? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's exciting. Um, real quick, we're wrapping up the series. We've been talking about in-person relationships, right? In-person. Who thought we'd ever have to, like, qualify? Do you want to meet up? Is that in-person or Zoom? <laughs> It's like, it's this new thing now. We're in person. And isn't it great to be in person, worshiping together in church today? Love worshiping with you. Thanks, Kim and the band. Although Chad's, like, mask was kind of riding up. Like, you, it looked like, like his, like, it was like his eyes were blocked out back there. I think he couldn't, he couldn't pull his hands down to pull it down. So he's just kind of, like, pl flying blind back there. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Um, I should have took a picture of that. That was good. Um, 
But like, it really is kind of where the rubber meets the road in Christianity when it comes to relationships, right? Like you can know the whole Bible and the Greek and the Hebrew and break it down. But it says in 1 Corinthians, if you don't have love, you're like a clanging cymbal or a gong. Just annoying, right? Like, like relationships are so spiritual. Jesus died for relationships that we could be righteous. And the word righteous literally means to be in right relationship. And so this relationship series is so important. And we're going to kind of wrap it up today just talking about something that's so simple but so challenging to live out. It's this. Loving others more than ourselves. Loving others more than ourselves. Um, do you guys know, some of you guys know Joe Gruber, so I can talk about him, but Joe, Joe is a former pro skater. He's kind of like the bald head, like just every part of his body is covered in tattoos, and he, he's known for loving Mountain Dew. If you don't know Joe, now that's everything about Joe like in like 30 seconds right there. But Joe Gruber in Portland... You can't do the do. If you live in Portland, you have to taste and see that the coffee is good in Portland, Oregon. If you, haven't, if you like coffee, you have to go to Portland because there's like, you know, like we all like Starbucks, right? You know, and then there's like Pete's, and then there's like, you know, we got Verve now. And then Portland, they just try to go, they got to try to go next level. And Joe Gruber has done that. I'm, I'm there. He keeps me out late. We're meeting up with Jackie and other people till like 12, 30 night. And then 5 in the morning, I hear this. <laughs> He's hand grinding the beans on a burr grinder. He's got a scale in the kitchen. This is what they do in Portland. They weigh, because it's not enough to just measure it. Like, I'm like two scoops, you know what I mean? Raisin bran, two scoops. <laughs> I'm like two scoops, and we're good. You know, it's like he's weighing the beans for an individual cup of hand ground coffee, because you can't grind it ahead of time, apparently. You got to grind it right there into the thing, and he's weighing it out. He's got this special little pot with the long, skinny little nose on it. You know what I'm talking about? And it's got a thermometer. It's like 210 degrees, bro. 210. And then he's just doing a little pour over like that, and he makes me coffee. I'm like, bro, so good. So good. And then he goes and he makes Katrina her coffee, and he makes it the way she likes it with the cream and the sugar and everything in there. And he brings it. She's not even awake yet. He just sneaks. I'm like getting a little window into Joe's world here. He sneaks it in. He puts it right next to her bed. So when she wakes up, she's got hot coffee right there. Sorry, guys. I just blew you out of the water. I've never done that for my wife. But <laughs> I'm just learning how to make the bed, okay? Learning about that. But <laughs> I'm just trying to make the bed, right? Some days I get it. Sometimes I forget. Um, I, I don't think that bed would ever be made if I, wasn't a, if I was a single man. What, it's like, why make the bed when you're going to go right back into it? It's like, it's not rocket science, you know what I'm saying? But I make the bed now. So, like, Joe's up there. He's making coffee for me. He's making co and then he made coffee for himself. And I thought, you know, that is such a cool picture of, like, this, this principle of loving others more than ourselves. Love means putting others first, above ourselves. And, again, it sounds so simple, but how many of you guys know this is hard to live out? And so we're going to go to, like, the, the passage for this. This is just, like, a good... I think this is a scripture that we all need just printed out on our mirror, okay? This is the relationship passage, Philippians chapter 2. And for some of us, it's a reminder. You've read this before, but if you're like me, I need to be reminded of this. Like, every day. Amen? Do nothing, verse 3, out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used in his, to his own advantage. He might be comparing how when Adam sinned, it was, remember the temptation that the serpent said, you'll be like God, right? Our temptation is to take more and be more and, to, and, to, and to, take, to, to be like God. And Jesus is, what Jesus did was, even though he is God, he lowered himself, right? He, rather, he made himself nothing. The ESV says he emptied himself. He poured himself out, taking the very nature 
of a servant and being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? He's still going. 14. <laughs> Check it out. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. I don't know about you, but I need to hear that sometimes. So that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without finding fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Okay. You guys okay? You still with me? Is this a good reminder for us? We want to we put others first. Three things I have for you today, I want to just encourage you and myself in this, is number one, when I read this passage, it, re, it reminds me and encourages me to evaluate my interest. Evaluate your interests. I love what it says. Not just looking out for your own interests, but the interests of others. You know, I, some of you guys know that I like to surf. And um, I usually don't surf on the weekends because it's really, really crowded. And when it's a sunny holiday weekend, I usually just drive by it, you know, <laughs> wave. <laughs> but yesterday, I just, I got, I had this trip this last week, and I had a lot going on. And the kids were going in different directions, and my wife, you know, it's, and so she's like, you should go surf. I'm like, ooh, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, like, when, if, when you're a dad and you get that window, like, you just kind of, you don't ask questions. You don't check the report. You don't check the tide. You just run. <laughs> That's so bad. So I just jump in, jump in the car. I had like an hour window, ran out, and, and I, I get to the point, and there's like 200 people there. And every three minutes, there's five waves that come through. You can do the math on that, right? Everybody wants to be riding that wave. And everybody is trying so hard to get in that spot, to get in that place, to get that wave, you know. And by nature, we're not selfless. By nature, we all want the wave, right? So you take off here, and somebody's taken off here, and this guy actually, like, nose dives in front of me. His board, he falls. The board launches over my head. I did, like, a matrix. <laughs> Somehow, I don't even know how. That, some, I don't, probably could never do it again, but it was just, you know, <laughs> you know, and... Uh, this one guy lost his board because he wasn't wearing a leash. And his board comes flying in there, and I'm on the inside. And I had that, that moment where I'm like, hmm, should I stop the board? Or should I just let it go? <laughs> you know, because the longer he takes getting back, the more chance I have of getting a wave. You know, it's like your Christianity, like the rubber beats the road here with Christianity, right? Am I going to be like, follow Jesus? And listen to the word, or am I just going to be like, ha ha, sucker. <laughs> and I did. I paddled up to the board. I, you know, almost hit me on the head. I'm, anyways, I got, somehow I came through this whole thing unscathed with no injuries, and I came back. But I'm not going to surf on the weekends anymore. That's my, my takeaway here. But the point of this is that, like, it's our nature to look for our own interests, Right? It's so easy. I wake up in the morning without coffee, and I'm like, ah. Oh. You know, I'm looking around thinking, okay, what am I going to do today? What do I need to do? What do I have to do? You know, it's easy. We just, it's easy to start that way, but God wants us to be not just looking out for ourselves, but looking out for others. 1 John 3.16, check this out. This is the other John 3.16, one of my favorite passages right here. Again, favorite to read. Not living it out is another thing. This is one of those passages you read and go, whoa, okay. I need your help, God, today. This is how we know what love is. You want to know what love is? God authored love, right? He defines love. There's a lot of different versions of love in the world that are not love. Um, but you want to know what love is? If, you know, does he love me? Does she love me? Is this a, whatever? Is this love? This is what the Bible defines love. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. You want to know what love is? Does it look like Jesus? And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. 
If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Man, you know, I, I know. I, did, did we read that poem up front? Did we read that mom poem? Did you guys see that? We, we posted on our Instagram this poem. And it was cool because it, like, it, it hit on the fact that like, this is a great day to celebrate moms, of course. If you're a mom, you're a rock star. We, we celebrate you. We all owe our mom, right? Regardless of how our relationship is with our mom, like she put us into this world. So there's something we can give thanks and be an honor. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I'll tell you what, moms are often such an amazing example of this. And the moms in my life, at least, um, I try to take Jenny away for the night, you know, to get away. And we like to go down to Monterey, Carmel area, you know, just because a little bit out of Santa Cruz, you know. And we go down there, and the first night, what's she thinking about? My kids, our kids. I love them, but I don't want to think about my kids. <laughs> Sorry, kids, we love you. But sometimes, you know, I took her away to go get away. And she's thinking about them. And then she wants to pray for them. I'm like, dang, you want to pray for them? All right, okay. <laughs> but her prayers are so beautiful. There's this song called Talking to Jesus. You should look it up on YouTube. It's a song that this guy wrote. It's a song about his mom. And uh, somebody put it on this morning. This is like a real centipede right here. That's sketchy. <laughs> you know you got centipedes in here, man? Whoa, Okay. I'm like, I got bare feet up here. I got centipedes. Okay. Um, you just kill that thing. There we go. Ah! <laughs> it's coming at me now. <laughs> Came back for more. This is the problem with being ADD and being a pastor. You can't not kill the centipede. But I heard this song earlier today. Uh, somebody put this song on, and it was uh, about, it's called Talking to Jesus. And it just was about a mom that was praying for her son. And it rem I couldn't help but just, it wrecked me. And I was thinking about my mom. Every morning, she'd make that pot of coffee, get all fired up, read the Bible, and she'd be in the kitchen praying for us kids. That was her thing. That's not, that's not everybody, but that was how my mom lived it out. That was her thing. And I, I can tell you today that I would not be standing here today. I would not be the person I am today without my mom without her praying for me and looking out for me. So evaluate your interests. Number two, embrace humility. Evaluate your interests, embrace humility. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. What is that? What is his mindset? That he emptied himself. We talked about that, right? We talked about how he emptied himself for others and how we're called to do that, that we're called to embrace humility. Humility is not really one of those things like we post about online, right? You know, you see everybody's, see these posts on social media, and it's like, hey, look at me. My life's doing great. I got this thing. This is happening to me. You know, it's like we always post like these great big moments, and, you know, and it's, it's we, we're not posting about the low moments. We're not posting about the stuff, and I think that um, humility is kind of a lost, you don't hear a lot about humility, but I think this is huge. Something I think we all can, can, can learn a little more of. James 4.10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. We want to be honored, but we don't want to be humble, right? He wants us to be humble. And Jesus defined it as the pathway to greatness. He says, you want to be great in the kingdom? Be a humble servant. And that's what Jesus modeled for us is, is humble. And I love what it says before the Lord, too. You think about that. Humble yourselves before the Lord. What does he see? He sees it all. We can't, we can't get away with it. You know what I'm saying? Not in a bad way. He just sees our hearts. And I, what, to me, that means genuine humility. That we're, that we're humble when no one's looking around. When we're... we're you know, and I think the, the key to humility has less to do just putting your, it's not about putting yourself down. I think it has more to do with seeing how high God is, how amazing God is, 
how holy and righteous he is. And when I see that, it allows me to see myself through his eyes. Last week, Pastor Chad talked about seeing others as God sees them. But I think humility, the key to that, is seeing ourselves the way God sees us. Not only does he see all of our faults and flaws and brokenness, but he also sees the beauty and the image of God that he created in us. And he sees us as, our, as his dearly loved children. Having kids has changed the way I see myself, friends. I'm telling you what, my whole idea of, of God like completely got flipped upside down when my daughter was born. It was such a big day. That moment when she came to the world, I was like, I had like this revelation because I was like, if I love her like this, that must be how God loves me. And so humility isn't self-deprecation. It's not beating yourself up or lowering yourself. It just, it means seeing yourself the way God sees you in truth. So I want to evaluate my interests. I want to embrace humility. I want to exercise honor, which is my final point, is exercise honor. The scripture said, value others above yourselves. What does that look like? The word honor Again, another H word that we don't hear a lot of in our, our day and age. Like, you hear about honor, you think of like, oh, I got honor roll at school or something. But the word honor in the Bible, it means to give weight to. It means to give weight to. So what do we give weight to? And, and, and I think we can honor people because of who they are and who God created them to be. And we can honor relationships. Even if the relationship isn't, again, like even if you don't have the relationship that you'd hope to have or you'd want to have, with your mom. You know, you can, still, you can always honor something. Even if it's just at a baseline, the sheer fact that you would not be here, that she physically brought you into this world, that is legit gnarly right there, right? Anyone that has witnessed a birth, you, there's, a, there's a holy awe and fear and trembling that you have. You're like, wow, that is next level. That's next level. You got to give respect. As we wrap up, I just was thinking about Jesus on the cross, right? Remember we talked about how he lowered himself to be a servant. And the crucifixion, this was an execution that was only reserved for the lowest of people. If you were a person of honor, you would not be executed on a cross. It was for slaves. It was for people in the lowest class. And God comes to earth. God sends his son. He sends his best to earth to show us the way, to teach us the message of the kingdom. And he is beaten and killed on a cross. And in that moment, I don't know how I would react to that moment. If, if, if my son, if I sent my son to give a message somewhere and someone did that to my son, it's a good thing I'm not God because I would rain down fire from heaven on everybody. I'm just going to tell you right now. It's a good thing. But the God who sent Jesus, the God of he the heavens, our creator, our father, he loves us so much, right? And in that final moment, Jesus shows us the heart of God. He's, he prays for us, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then he does something really profound. John 19, 25 to 27. At your lowest moments, by the way, you find out who your real friends are, Right? Jesus is in his lowest moment. I remember getting picked up in the principal's office in my lowest moment. Getting driven home, listening to country music and the heater blasting in the cop's car. And you know who was there standing by me? My mom. Not encouraging that, I'm just saying. In your lowest moments, this is Jesus' lowest moment, and, and look, look, it says, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. His mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Anyone that thinks that the Bible doesn't respect women doesn't know how to read it. Just saying. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple in whom he loved standing nearby, that's John. He's the only one of the disciples that didn't flee and run away. Which, by the way, isn't it cool that he saw himself as the disciple that Jesus loved? 
I don't know if he's like the only one. <laughs> I'm the dis- Wouldn't that be cool if we all saw ourselves as that? I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. I'm the guy that Jesus loved. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple in whom he loved, standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the, to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, his disciple took her into his home. Not only was Jesus looking out for us, taking the sin of the world on himself so that we can be forgiven, but he's looking out for his mom. That's a beautiful picture right there of putting others first, loving others above ourselves. And I want to just circle on back to this last part of the passage here because this is not easy. Verse 14, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without finding fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. How are we going to stand out? How are we going to show the world that God loves them? How are we going to be a bright light to our community and our neighborhood? How are we going to impact Scott's Valley? It's this. It's love. When everyone's grumbling and complaining, we're not doing it. We're not grumbling. And I grumble, you guys, if I'm honest. There's things that I grumble and complain about. And Lord, I want to just, I want to have your heart. I want to genuinely love others, not just because I have to. I want to love others genuinely from the heart because you first loved me. Help us, Lord. Would you take a moment as we just are prayerful? Would you take a moment to think about what relationship in your life needs a little bit more of God's love? Where are you grumbling? Where are you having a hard time embracing someone or something? Where do you need to look out for others? Where do you need to humble yourself? Where do you need to express honor that maybe, maybe it's hard to honor someone. Maybe that's exactly right where we need to honor is when it's hard, not when it's easy. And hey, while your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, we just, we just never want to end a service without looking out and seeing, hey, is there somebody here that needs to get right with God? At the end of the day, he wants to be in right relationship. He died for a relationship with you. And you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do everything right. In fact, he died for you because of that, so we can be forgiven. And all you have to do is receive that love. Maybe there's some people here that that's the hard part for you. You're good at loving others, but you're not always good at receiving that love. You're always thinking about other people. But sometimes it becomes a duty and a drag because you're always looking out for other people and you're not ever receiving that love from God. He wants it to be like water flowing through us. As he loves us, we love others out of the source of his love from a genuineness. If you're here today and you need, you need to receive that love today, maybe you need to come home, maybe you need to get right in your relationship with God, it's really simple, friends. A, admit that you need a Savior. B, believe that Jesus died and rose for you. And C, commit to follow him. Maybe there's some here that you've had a mom praying for you. And this is that moment that you need to get things right with God. Would you look up and make eye contact with me if you're here today and that's, that's you, you're saying, yes, Danny. Maybe wave your hand at me just so I can see you. You want to get right here. Maybe you need to receive that love today and open up your heart to receive his love. Awesome. That is so cool. Thanks, Lord, for loving us more than yourself. But we want to live that way. We want to be a community that lives to serve and love others. That this would be a life-giving place that our homes would be life-giving homes because we're living to put others first together as families and friends and neighbors. 
We want to be that light. We want to shine like the stars in the sky, Lord, not because of anything that we do to be good or act good, but Lord, because of your love in us. Help us to embrace that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, the band's going to lead us. Would you, would you join us as we respond to God? Chad's going to lead us in a moment in, in communion. Let's just take a moment to receive his love so we can give it out that much more. Amen.
will never be alone to be another in the fire standing next to me there is another in the waters holding back the seas and should i ever need reminding how good you've been to me i can by joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding How good you've been to me I got my joy come every battle Know oh, that's where you'll be. I count the joy come from every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. Well, I'm sure you guys noticed today that we have communion. If the, in the back, if you haven't gotten one yet, please grab one. Um, I like to think of communion as really simple. A lot of times it can get um, kind of complicated when it doesn't need to be. Uh, it's simply remembering and honoring, as Danny was saying, honoring what Jesus did for us. So this, this communion where it can look complicated and, and sacred and, and you have to be worthy to take it, that's not the case at all. What it is, is honoring and remembering and having a, an attitude of gratitude for what Christ did for us. And so if you don't have faith in Jesus, it's, it's a cracker, it's a wafer and juice. But when you put your faith in Jesus, it becomes a little bit more than that. Or it's a, it's a healthy reminder for your soul. For me, that without Jesus, I'm a sinner and, and I'm broken but with Jesus, I'm redeemed, I'm loved, and I'm made whole. And so at your leisure, if you are comfortable taking it in, inside, go for it. If you want to wait until you're outdoors, completely understand that. But we are going to eat the, eat the wafer and just thank God for giving his, his body, his humanity for us. Giving of himself for the pain to save us. And then... And then as the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, the blood, he paid the price that, the, that we couldn't pay in dying for our sins. And the best thing about it is it didn't stop at the cross. It continued, and it is still going stronger than ever because he, he rose three days later. And we get to live in that with him. So if you would like to take it now, you can. If you would like to wait, feel free to do that. But... Lord, thank you so much for what you did, what you went through for someone like myself. That you didn't see just a broken knucklehead, but you saw. You saw your son. And I pray that right now, as we, as we remember your offering and your sacrifice for us, that we are reminded of how you see us as dearly loved fearfully and wonderfully made, and as a masterpiece, Jesus. And as we close service, I would just like to remind us of your love and that it's the, it's the honoring that we want to do today. And so mothers are of physical children, mothers of spiritual children, mothers of relational children, we want to honor you in all of that because you don't have to go through pregnancy and labor to be a mother. You don't, it's not, it's not a prerequisite. Prerequisite is loving those beyond yourself. So we want to honor you in that. We have a gift for you as you exit. It's a little succulent, and it's on a little table. Feel free to grab one, pick one out. They are real, so you can plant them or put them somewhere else, but we want to send you home with something. So... Jesus, thank you for everything you've done and all that you do. And we will see you next week, 10 o'clock. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. We love you. Thank you so much.
Amen.